good morning all so as we as you know that the current affairs classes under vijay baba will start from february 26 so how the classes are going to be how the classes are going to be this is the demo class so so in the same format the current affairs sessions will be there and the current affairs will be of 40 hours in that 40 hours each session will be for 2 hours so 20 sessions will be there so today i will be discussing about current affairs in this particular january month current affairs in this particular current affairs class i will be linking with pyqs i will make you aware how we have to select the current affairs pyq anyhow polity economy history geography we can link why because the syllabus is static so again we can repeat like the topics like speaker like the topics like president like the topics like vice president we can repeat why because the syllabus is static the problem will come with current affairs why because current affairs on yearly basis monthly basis on daily basis the current affairs will be changing then how we have to link or how we have to identify the probable current affairs topics for 2024 prelims or 2025 prelims or 2026 prelims or 2027 prelims means how we have to identify the current affairs that is very important i tell you that rather than reading the current affairs if you analyze the pyqs of current affairs and understand how they might ask in the next examination is very important so this another one and a half hour or two hours of session will be focusing on this particular element of how to identify the current affairs of current exam for the current exam so so i am going to discuss about january month current affairs so first topic which was in the news the first topic which is in the news is aditya l1 aditya l1 what is aditya l1 it is the second space observatory satellite it is a second space observatory satellite means which will be observing the space so it will be studying about the astronomical things it will be studying about the space earlier it was astrosat now it is aditya this aditya l1 is mainly studying the sun the photosphere the coronosphere of the sun has been exclusively studied under this aditya l1 so isro performed crucial maneuvers on january 6 to bind aditya l1 into l1 orbit so l1 orbit is nothing but lagrange point what is this lagrange point lagrange point means if you see here this is called as lagrange point which means which means where the sun's gravity or the earth's gravity will not be applied here so completely neutral point those neutral points are called as lagrange points on this particular neutral points here the satellite will be placed so that particular place where the neutral points between the sun and the earth that particular region is called as lagrange point in this lagrange point the aditya satellite was been launched and the point is called as l1 lagrange point 1 so this is looking at sun this is looking at sun nearly 1.5 million kilometers from the earth 1.5 million kilometers from the earth it will be looking at the sun this is what which is in the news so earlier when we launched the aditya l1 it was not fixed the satellite didn't came on to the l1 point and did not fixed itself so isro they managed it they maneuvered it they changed it so that it will be stabilized at this particular point called as lagrange point hence it is in the news it happened on january 6th so how we have to identify we will see see this is the pyq this is the pyq of 2015 with reference to astrosat the astronomical observatory launched by india which of the following statements are correct which of the following statements are correct so the question is about astrosat so now you should not study astrosat now if you study astrosat you are a fool now we have to identify same site of satellites any new satellites launched by isro in the last 2 years not only 2023 in 2022 or 2023 or in 2024 oh ho there was a question on astrosat so compulsory i have to look into the satellites which are looking at the astronomy so what is the satellite which is looking at the astronomy aditya l1 that is the question so how did he ask the question other than usa and russia india is the only country to have launched a similar observatory into the space no 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 russia also one country Russia also one country, UK also other country, which launched AstroSat to look into the 
astronomy. Now, you have to understand Aditya, whether studying of sun is done by only India or any other country. So, whether it is India or any other country, like that we have to make the reference. Second statement. So, it asked that Astrosat is India's first dedicated multi wavelength space observatory. Yes, it is first I told you first space observatory is Astrosat, second space observatory is Aditya L1. So, this statement is correct. So, I am not here to what is correct and what is wrong. So, on the same lines we have to go back. In the current affair sessions which I am going to do very exclusively with high content, I will be selecting the topics based upon this particular PYQs only. So, that that PYQs based current affairs I will be doing. So, Aditya L1 is the first space based observatory class Indian solar mission to study the sun. Studying astronomy it is the second, but studying sun it is first. Studying astronomy it is first, second, but studying sun it is first. ISRO second astronomy observatory, first sun, second astronomy, placed in hollow orbit around the Lagrangian point. What is the Lagrangian point? It is a region where gravity between earth and sun will be neutral. So, that particular point is called as Lagrangian point. 5 years payloads are there. So, time period of Aditya is 5 years and how many payloads are there? How many which we kept on it are 7 payloads are there. Mainly to study about the sun, solar wind, solar flares, chronosphere, photosphere. This is what and India Aditya is studying about sun in that way we have to identify hence it is in the news. Second topic which is in the news is Ayodhya Ram Mandir. Sir, Ayodhya Ram Mandir whether we can expect a question in prelims we will go back. Ayodhya Ram Mandir 2022, 2022 there was a question the prime minister recently inaugurated the new circuit house near Somnath temple Veraval means complex. Which of the following statements are correct regarding Somnath temple? So, there was a question whenever the inauguration of any temple or renovation of any temple happened or a person of stature of president or vice president or prime minister involved, then they are asking in UPSC. So, generally they are not asking about the temples, but they are asking about the temples either president or vice president or prime minister is involved. So, hence it is making the news. So, Somanath it made the news in the 2021, asked in 2022. Similarly, Ayodhya is making the news, why because prime minister involved. So, we can expect a question on Ayodhya. On the lines of Somanath, we got a reasoning. Oh, so, now I have to study Ayodhya. Somanath temple is one of the Jyotirlinga shrines, very important. So, when we are studying about Somanath, we have to know the Jyotirlinga are very important, whether it is one of the Jyotirlinga or not. Yes. A description of Somnath temple was given by Al Biruni. We know Somnath temple is notorious. Notorious means badly famous. Why badly famous? Because Muhammad Ghajni is the person who destroyed this temple complex called as Somnath. Why he destroyed? See, at that time, no social media, no WhatsApp message, no, no Instagram reels to make on the temples. Then how it happened? Al Biruni written a book mentioning about magnificent temple structure of Somnath. So, when this particular person is reading the Al Biruni book in which he mentioned about Somnath temple, he was attracted by seeing the treasure, by listening, by reading the treasure of Somnath temple. So, he attacked Somnath temple, important or not? Nowadays, we every time in the news, the temples are destroyed, etcetera, etcetera is happening. So, Somnath temple is a very first temple which was been destroyed. So, it was destroyed because it was written in a book called as Al Biruni. Hence, it is in the it's important point. Prana Pratishta of Somanath temple was done by President as Radha Krishnan. We do not know the meaning of Prana Pratishta, but from last 20, 30 days we are listening about Prana Pratishta, Prana Pratishta, what is that Prana Pratishta, we do not know. So, same term was used in Somanath temple. It was not as Radha Krishnan, it is Rajendra Prasad. So, this is wrong. So, now we are not studying about Somanath temple. So, now we are going to study about Ayodhya Ram Mandir. So, in detail we have to discuss about Ayodhya Ram Mandir. The most important thing about Ayodhya Ram Mandir is no iron steel was been used in the construction of Ram Mandir. The Prana Pratishta or consecration ceremony of the Ram Lalla idol was performed by Honorable Prime Minister. Hence, it is in the news as the same level of Somnath. Iron and steel were not used in the construction. Which type of construction it is? Nagara style of construction. Garbagraha, Mandapas, Mandirs will be there. The chief architect is Chandrakant Sompura. The chief architect of the temple is 
Chandrakant Sompura, the person who designed the idol is Arun Yogi. Bansi Paharapur pink sandstone was used for construction for the temple, which has been taken from Bharatpur district of Rajasthan. Each corner of the compound dedicated to Surya, Bhagwati, Ganesha, Shiva. Bhagwati, Surya, Ganesha, Shiva. Other than that, two temples are there. One is Hanuman and other is Annapurna. This is about Ayodhya Ram Mandir. So, mainly about the st construction structure we have to understand. So, Nagara style, the person who designed the temple is Chandrakan Sampura, the person who designed the idol is some yogi and which yogi? Arun Yogi, Yogi and the, the stone which we use is red sandstone which is taken from Bharatpur district of Rajasthan and it is having in four places, four temples are there, those are four are, one is two temples are main temples, four side cities, four side cities Surya, Bhagavati, Ganesha, Shiva, other than this four, two big temples came into existence, going to be existence, going to be constructed. One is Hanuman, other is in this way on the lines of Somanath, we have to study about Ayodhya Ram Mandir. Next, NCAP, National Clean, National Clean Air Program. Why I should read? Again, it is in the month of January. Why I should read National Clean Air Program, PYQ. In the guideline statements, context of World Health Organization, air quality standards were been asked. Number one, the 24 hour mean of PM 2.5 particulate matter 2.5 should not exceed 51 units or micro grams per millimeter cube and annual mean of PM 2.5 should not exceed 5 milligrams per millimeter cube. First statement, in a year the highest levels of ozone population occur during the periods of inclement weather. Inclement weather means like winter season, spring season. Third, PM 10 can penetrate the lung barrier and enter the blood stream, blood stream. See, particulate matter 2.5, particulate matter 10 means it is mainly based upon its size, mainly based upon its size. Particulate matter 2.5, micrometer, very, very small. Particulate matter 10, little bit more, you tell me. Small particles will go inside quickly, without reading this we will use our common sense and we will try to eat. PM 10, point 10 will go inside very quickly or PM 10 2.5 will go quickly, 2.5. It is asked about what? PM 10 can penetrate the lung barrier and enter the bloodstream. No, it cannot. Why? Because size is, we can identify it. If it is coming means we will close our nose. Excessive ozone in the air can trigger asthma. True. This is wrong. In a year, the highest levels of ozone pollution occur during the periods of, in summer season, we can see the heat islands ozone level more or in spring or winter season we can see the ozone levels more, summer. So, this is also wrong. The 24 hour mean of 2.5 should not exceed 15 microgram and annual mean 2.5 should not exceed 5 milligram. This is correct statement which we have to remember, but this is a PYQ of 2022. Oh ho, they asked from World Health Organization guidelines with respect to air pollution. So, they asked about World Health Organization guidelines with respect to air pollution. So, in the month of January, what is making the news? In the month of in the month of January, National Clean Air Program, NCAP is making the news. Why I should read it? Why? Because there is a question on World Health Organization air pollution criteria. World Health Organization air pollution guidelines. On the same lines, now I have to focus on National Clean Air Program. So, <clears throat> context, what is the context? Majority of cities far from clean air target, majority of cities in India are far from clean air targets according to report given by Respirer, Living Sciences and climate trends. According to this report, majority of the cities in India are far away from air quality, air quality ranks 
or standards majority of the cities means air pollution is very high according to this particular report. How you can tell we will ask respirer then respirer is telling that I am telling according to your program which program national clean air program. So, I will question if I am a patriot I will ask who are you respirer leaving signs and climate trends who are you to tell that Indian cities are polluted that much then respirer body is telling that I am telling according to your own program, your own program had fixed some standards. So, in that standards no city is coming all the cities are releasing excess pollution. So, which program national clean air program. So, as a civil servant you should to know about this national clean air program launched by your own ministry because this foreign body ministry of environment forest and climate change in the year. 2019 first ever initiative to frame a national framework for air quality management with a time bond reduction target. So, we fixed time bond reduction manner air pollution will be controlled who fixed it our own government fixed for that what name we gave national clean air program which ministry ministry of environment and forest change are getting my point see everything will have a reasoning. So, this report gave a report this body gave a report and told that no city in India is maintaining the standards. I am a patriot I asked the body how you can tell I am telling as per your program your country your minister ministry of climate ministry of environment forest and climate change came with a strategic program in 2019 by the name called as national clean air program according to that you people planned to reduce the air pollution, but today it is 2024 January no city has reduced its pollution covers 132 non attainment cities which are identified by the central pollution control board to cut the concentration of coarse particulate matter 10 and fine particulate matter 2.5 non attainment cities are those that have fallen short of national ambient air quality standards for over 5 years before national clean air program another program is there which is called as national AAQ that is national ambient air quality standards. So, under national air national ambient air quality standards some states were been who are producing more particulate matter 10 who are producing more particulate matter 2.5 were been identified as non attainment cities. Non attainment cities are those cities who are producing more PM 10 who are producing more PM 2.5 according to which national ambient air quality standards. Again I am reporting that in this non attainment cities in this 132 non attainment cities no city is maintaining the standards which is fixed by. So, already one thing is was there you became non attainment you failed again I came in 2019 with a new plan in that also you are unable to control the air quality. So, this is age old and this is current affair this is previous this is present. So, we have to know about this national clean air program. So, 6 pollutants as per <coughs> NAAQS what are those remember this. So, list of pollutants as per NAAQS which are underperforming PM 2 point PM 10 PM 2.5 nickel nitrous oxide carbon monoxide ammonia ozone lead benzene benzofiren arsenic acid sulfur dioxide. Under NAAQS the main components are PM 10 and PM 2.5 other than this other 10 components also been studied with respect to air pollution under which NAAQS many times they asked this question which of the following chemicals come under this which of the following does not come under this remember this NAAQS PM 10 PM 2.5 PM 10 PM 2.5 first we will remember short short nitrous oxide nitrous oxide is there no carbon monoxide ammonia then big big words nickel ozone lead benzene benzopyrin arsenic acid and sulfur dioxide 
nitrogen dioxide. In this way, how many are there? 12 are there under which NAAQS. Now, coming to NCAP. So, I told that under NNNAAQS, which are not following this standards, are being called as non attainment cities. Again, under NCAP also, not a single non attainment city is maintaining its standard. What is non attainment standards? What is non attainment cities? are those that have fallen short of the national ambient air quality standards. Any city which is not falling under this guidelines means falling down of the guidelines, those will be called as non attainment cities. The same non attainment cities are also not falling under national clean air program. Oh, so what are the target fixed? The country's current annual average prescribed limits for P PM 2.5 and PM 10 are 40 micrograms per cubic meter and 60 micrograms per cubic meter. That means, for PM 2.5 it is 40, for PM 10 it is 60. Either target is there? 2022. 2020 target is there? Whether it is there? Mean this much should not exit, it is there? Hence, whether we have to remember it or not. So, PM 2.5 how much? 40. PM 10 how much? What are the units? What are the units? Micrograms per cubic meter. Here they asked, are you getting my point? Here they asked, first statement, they asked targets, they gave the units also. So, hence we have to rem remember for NCAP also. Second, the NCAP initially set a target of reducing key air pollutants PM 10 and PM 2.5 by 20 to 30 percent in 2024, taking the pollution levels in 2017 as a base year. How much I should reduce by 2024? 20 to 30 percent of 2017 level of which pollutants PM 10 and PM 2.5. We did not reach it. Not a single city reached it. Hence, it is in the news. Who told this? This body told. So, already we have NAAQS. So, NAAQS we are unable to buy because 12 chemicals are there. So, it is outdated. Under NAQ, NAAQS, we made with a term called as non attainment cities. Again, when we came up with NCAP in 2019, not a single non attainment cities are maintaining the standard. What was the target? Fixed as per 2017 level by the year 2024, PM10 and PM2.5 should be reduced to 20 to 30 percent by the year 2024. Third target. The center moved the goalpost and set a new target of 40 percent reduction in particulate matter concentration by 2026. Now, what I did, I could not achieve. So, central government again changed the goal and told that at least by 2026 we have to reduce by 40 percent. Are you getting my points? See how we have to identify the questions. If you remember this one mark one correct answer means 2 marks, one negative answer means 0 0.66 marks gone. So, in this current affairs program, each and every topic will matters. Again, I am telling you, why? Because I am going to do within 2 hours 30 topics I will be doing. Again, you have to go NAAQS kya hota hai, NCAP what it will be there. Again, once again you have to do Google. I am covering, but still. So, what will happen? You will get the command on the next. So, for example, the World Health Organization has released for you people these standards has released global air quality guidelines. The new guidelines recommended air quality levels are 6 pollutants. What are the 6 pollutants? Under this, under this particulate matter 2.5, particulate matter 10, ozone, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide. So, under World Health Organization Global Air Quality Guidelines, how many pollutants are there? 6. Under AQQ, NAAQS, how many are there? 12 are there. Under NCAP, I am focusing mainly on what? 2. PM 10 and PM 2. Are you getting my point? So, here how many are there? 6 are there. Just remember those 12 NAAQS. World Health Organization, Global Air Quality Standards, how many are there? 6 are there. NCAP highest focus is on what? PM 10 and PM 2.5. 6. 
this is average p p y q this is about p y q this is missed target we are not bothered about it why because they asked earlier but we can expect in a statement so how many pollutants are there according to world air quality guidelines six are there according to n a a q s how many are there two are there. unesco creative cities network unesco's creative cities network in the month of january only UNESCO Creative Cities Network. What is this, sir? UNESCO will identify some cities based on six criteria and give them award named as UNESCO Creative Cities. What are those? What are seven creatives? What are those? Craft. folk arts janapada craft handicraft folk art media arts like posters photographs media arts film film design gastronomy cooking gastronomy means cooking literature six and seventh is music in the seven fields UNESCO will identify the cities and give them awards. Number one is what? Crafts, folk arts. Number two, media arts, films, design, gastronomy, literature and music. Number one, crafts. Two, folk arts. Three, media. Next, film. Next, gastronomy. Next, literature. Next, Oh, oh. in this seven criteria unesco will be identifying and giving them awards which cities got we will for, we will we will remember later so how many fields are there seven fields are there who will be giving unesco will be giving united nation educational scientific and cultural are there if you don't remember full form also no problem so how many are there seven criteria are there who got awards unesco announced the 55 new cities to its creative cities network from that 55 two are present in india in the 2024 january unesco declared 55 cities as unesco's creative cities from that 55 two are from india one is called as cozy code cozy code as a city of literature gwalior as a city of music so 2024 two cities were been identified under unesco's creative cities network 55 were been identified across the world from 55 two are present in india one is cozy good for literature and gwalior for music first cozy good good thing so what type of literature they have going detail something something important will be there cozy good city was been identified as unesco's creative cities network in literature first city in india to receive the prestigious title of city of literature by unesco the city of have a long history of literature kerala literature festival which is one of the largest literary gatherings in asia the city is also home to many renowned writers like potikat the most celebrated writer of the city tikkodian vallasala sanjayan because of their writing because of their literature this is the first literature city in india which one cozy code next is gwalior second city in india to be getting the award called as unesco creative cities for music after varanasi first city in music is varanasi second city in music in gwalior it is a birthplace of tansen one of the navratnas in akbar regime the city is also origin of gwalior garana the oldest and most influential school of hindustani classical music hindustani classical music is in north india carnatic music in south india hindustani classical music is influenced by persian carnatic music is called as indigenous music of india so two cities were been identified one is called as kosi good other is called as gwal now about uccn about uccn unesco's creative cities network started from which year 2004 promote cooperation among cities which recognize creativity as a strategic factor in their urban development by using the creativity we can develop the cities for the development of the cities we are using this 
creativity. Like people want to learn Gwalior Garana. People want to learn Garana. People want to learn Hindustani. So, they will check into the UNESCO's creative cities. Oh, Gwalior is a city which is very famous for Hindustani. So, from foreign people or some domestic people will go to the Gwalior and they will settle down there. In that way, the urban development will be happening. People will be coming migrating to the places based upon seven criteria. Number one, craft. Number two, folk dance or folk art. Three, media. Fourth, film. Fifth, gastronomy. Sixth, literature. Seventh, Other Indian cities in like Jaipur, crafts and folk arts, crafts and folk arts one, crafts and folk arts, Varanasi music, Chennai music, Mumbai film, Hyderabad gastronomy, Srinagar crafts and folk art. Okay. So, the seven are what? First one is crafts and folk art one, media arts two, film three, design four, gastronomy five, literature six and seven is? Next. So, why I asked this? Why I, we are discussing about UCCN? Why we are discussing about UCCN? We are discussing about UCCN mainly because of with reference to United Nations Credentials Committee consider the following statement. So, there was one United Nations Credential Committee. So, hence we are discussing about it. So, this is old from 2022. Oh, oh, there was one credential committee. This is creativity cities. So, whenever we are coming across, we have to identify and we have to move on. Next question. Supreme Court Legal Services Committee. It is current affair earlier. It is current affair today. It will be current affair tomorrow also. Why? There is an act called as Legal Services Authority Act of 1987. By this statutory provision, NALSA came into existence which is called as National Legal Services Authority. What is, what does the NALSA do? The NALSA establishes its office in Supreme Court in High Court, whereby the free legal services will be provided to the poorest of the poor. That is the main function of National Legal Services Authority. It is a statutory right. Why? Because this body has been established under what? Legal Services Authority Act of 1987, which tells that compulsory we have to provide free services. To whom? To whom? SCs, STs, whose income is less than 1 lakh, transgender whose income is less than 2 lakhs. Like that there are some criteria are given. I am a poor person or you are an IAS officer. You are an IAS officer, I came near you and told. One case is there, my land is under dispute. Big politician want to take my land. I do not have money to hire a lawyer. Please help me madam, district collector, I asked you. You do not have time, then you will use your knowledge. You will tell that there is a National Legal Service Authority established under Legal Services Act of 1987. In high court, in supreme court, there will be bodies who will be serving freely. You come from which community? Sir, I come from general category, but my annual income is less than 1 lakh. Okay. Take your income certificate, go to the office, show them. So, one advocate will be allocated to you freely. It is useful or not? So, those usefulness only they are asking in prelims. For example, why I am discussing about it? In India, legal service authority provide free legal services to which of the following types of citizens? I should also know, no? Person with an annual income less than 1 lakh, true. Transgender with an annual income less than 2 lakhs, true. Member of other, they did not discuss about other backward classes or other than senior citizens. There is no criteria. They kept only SC, ST and their income is less than 1 lakh or income is less than 2 lakhs. Those people will be provided free legal service. If not, everyone will ask for? Answer is 1 and 2, we are not bothered about it. Oh, oh. So, the question 2020, they asked on legal service authority. So, hence free legal aid, DPSP, which article? Free legal aid, free legal aid, which article? DPSP, online people? Article 39A. Article 39 a talks about free legal aid. So, it is also a direct principles of state policy which gives power to the state to provide free legal services. So, Supreme Court Justice B. R. Gawai has been nominated as the chairman of Supreme Court Legal Services Committee. 
Hence, it is in the universe. Established under Section 3A of the Legal Service Authorities Act 1987, the Supreme Court Legal Services Committee primary objective is to offer free and competent legal services, especially in cases falling under the jurisdiction of Supreme Court falling under the jurisdiction of Supreme Court. Now, you will get the doubt. Sir, what are the jurisdictions of Supreme Court? What are the jurisdictions of Supreme Court? I will tell you, see, it is me, okay, I will tell you. Original jurisdiction, what is original jurisdiction? Interpretation of Supreme Court, interpretation of Supreme Court. Next, what? Appellate means, it comes from directly we cannot appeal, it should come from lower court. Third most important is dispute between the states, dispute between the states. These are the jurisdictions of Supreme Court. There are two things which you have to remember, curative petition, special leave petition. Curative petition means a judgment was been given, a judgment was been given, but I have a doubt, some problem is there with the judgment some some factual problem is there. So, I want to get reheared. So, on special cases, the Supreme Court rehears the case is called as curative petition. So, that innocent will not be punished. So, already judgment was been delivered. If again the case has been heard is called as curative petition. Another concept will be there which is called a special leave petition. Special leave petition means same a order decree is been given. But on special consideration like physically handicapped, like pregnant or say any other special case, if the Supreme Court accepts the repetition, it is called as special leave petition. So, two types of petitions will be there. One is called as curative petition where the judgment was been given. Again, if it is called for hearing, it is called as curative petition. Any case, special leave petition on special cases like pregnant or, 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 or tribal people, on special case, if the case has been reopened or repetition has been filed, it is called as special leave petition. So, the special leave petition and curative petitions will be present only with Supreme Court of India. So, established free and competent legal services, this body will be working under Supreme Court. Who is the chairperson appointed? Gawai. The committee comprises sitting Supreme Court judge as a chairman and members appointed by the CGI possessing prescribed experience and qualification. The Indian constitution article 39 a free legal service authority should be provided. Nalsa constituted in 1995 based upon the act called as 1987 national legal services authority act. Na Nalsa came into existence in 1995 overseas evaluates the implementation of legal aid programs and formulates policies to ensure the availability of legal services. The act also led to the establishment of state legal service authority and district legal service authority headed by high court chief justice and district judges. So, according to the act, it is at the Supreme Court, it is at the high court. But however, after the act, they also made that the free legal services also should be provided at district level. So, at Supreme Court, who is authority will be looking over the free legal services? Supreme Court Legal Services Committee. Similarly, at high court also there will be a legal services committee, a district also there will be a district legal services authority, which come under the act called as legal services authority act of 1987, whereby the NALSA came into existence in 1995. Why I asked this? Because 2000 there is a question on free legal services. Next question, finance commission 14th. 15th and 16th Finance Commission. Recently, Government of India had established the 16th Finance Commission. Government of India had established the 16th Finance Commission. Under 16th Finance Commission, Arvind Panagriya was been appointed as the chairperson of 16th Finance Commission. Hence, it is in the news. 15th Finance Commission, from 2000 to 2026, N.K. Singh was the chairperson. So, now 16th Finance Commission which should come from 2026 to 2031, the 16th Finance Commission under Article 280 of the Constitution. So, for that the chairman is Arvind Panigriya, hence it is in the news. One of the major function of Finance Commission is devaluation of funds. How much funds should be allocated to state government, how much funds should be allocated to central government will be decided by Finance Commission. But the recommendation given by Finance Commission is not binding, it is advisory in nature. Why it is in the news? Why we should study about Finance Commission? 
why we should study about finance commission see 2023 recent 2023 consider the following statements how many of the above as criteria other than population area and income districts which of the following are part of 15th finance commission means what are all the criteria taken so that how much money should be devolved so what are all the criteria that we have to, anyhow we have to remember 15th finance commission 16th finance commission so demographic performance population increasing or population decreasing based upon demographic performance the money will be devolved forest and ecology more forest forest and ecology governance good reforms good amount stable government no tax and physical efforts for the horizontal tax devaluation the 15th commission has been used so how many are correct four are correct but which question this is 15th finance commission so already 15th finance commission has been asked so now we have to study what so in 2023 there was a question on 15th finance commission so that means compulsory we have to study now 16th finance commission as well as 15th finance commission also why because 15th finance commission is running no till 2026 one more important with respect to 15th finance commission all finance commissions are only 5 years but 15th finance commission first planned from 2020 to 2021 but again they increased from 2021 to 2026 only 5 year only finance commission which is working more than 5 years is 15th finance commission yeah. government of india in adhering to article 280 of the constitution established 16th finance appointing panigria the former niti ayog chairman as finance commission chairman who is also professor at columbia university key points 16th finance responsible to recommending the formula for revenue distribution between the center and the state yes or no starting from 2026 revenue distribution devaluation financial devaluation will be done according to the recommendations given by finance commission specific terms of reference have been outlined including the distribution of tax proceeds between the union and the states principles governing grants in aid to the states and measures to bolster state funds for local bodies and panchayat three things how much funds should be given to state government how much revenue should be distributed between the union and the state number 3 how much funds should be allocated to local bodies these three things are the main functions of finance commission 16th finance commission finance commission has also been tasked with review, reviewing disaster management financing arrangements under the disaster management act and making recommendations for improvement one extra point is been added under what is that disaster management funds reviewing how the central government should allocate the funds reviewing of disaster so anyhow three will be present number 1 revenue distribution between the center and the state number 2 funds allocation to the states revenue distribution means hak second is i am giving funds that is second third is local bodies now fourth one extra point is been added to 16th finance commission reviewing finance arrangement when disasters occur so disaster management financing review fourth extra point added to 16th finance commission the 15th finance commission was been done by nk singh and the 16th finance commission is done by arvind panikriya now see here <coughs> 14th 15th 14th 15th what are the criteria is used for 14th finance commission and 15th finance commission population 27.5% population 15% area 15% area 15% forest and ecology 7.5% forest and ecology 10% income distance income distance means gross state domestic product of my state compared with best performing state that is called as income distance i will see this gap and i will allocate the funds income distance income distance how much 45% 12.5% for what demographic performance now you see 15th finance commission india is losing south india is losing why because here demographic performance where the population is more when the population is more so they will get more funds so south india who had reduced the 
population, they will get little less amount when compared to North Indian states. Why? Because there the population was been given how much percentage of value? 12.5 percent. So, these criteria are very important. Based upon this criteria only, the distribution of revenue will happen. Similarly, now they are planning for 16th finance commission also, how much they did not finalize it, they will finalize within one month. So, you have to remember in 16th finance commission, what are the criteria will be present, how much percentage value will be present. But as of now, difference between the 14th and 15th is how much? See for example, income distance 50 percent, South Indians are performing more 50 percent, good thing. The states which are producing less are 45 percent, but population is given more important. Next question, <coughs> GI tax, GI tax, why sir, why I have to study geographical indication tax, why I have to study geographical indication tax, for example, 2015, which of the following have been accorded geographical indication. So, there was a PYQ on geographical indication. So, compulsory we have to do on geographical indication. Banaras Saris, true, they got. Thirupati Laddu, they got. Rajasthani Dal Bhati Churma, food, it did not got. I am not talking about which got and which did not got. So, there was a question on geographical indication. So, answer is 1 and 3 only, but we are not for this. So, what is geographical indication? Geographical indication is a specific product based criteria given to some geographical goods. So, that adulteration will not happen and that particular product will have market. So, that the people belongs to that region will produce more and they earn more. For that particular uniqueness, we are coming up with this geographical indication, a legislative mechanism. Geographical indication, recently 17 products from across 6 states were given means what? You have to remember this 17 products. Last few days 17 products got GI tax. Is a name or signed used as some products that correspond to a specific geographical location? For example, Atrepuram, Putarekul of Andhra Pradesh. GI tag ensures that only the authorized users or those residing in that geographical territory are allowed to use the popular product name. Means only they can tell Tirupati Laddu or they can tell Banaras Saris, other people cannot tell it. A Sari, see I can also make Banaras Sari in Hyderabad, but I cannot name it as Banaras Saris are made in Hyderabad, then it is wrong. GI tag also protects the product being copied by others. A recognized GI tag is valid for 10 years, so it is not indefinite. Every 10 years they have to renewable it. How renewable sir? They have to make it popular. When it become popular, they will continue the GI tag. The geographical indication of goods registration and protection act 1999 seeks to provide for the registration and better protection of geographical indication related to goods. It is covered and directed by world trade organization agreements on trade related aspects of intellectual property. The nodal agency for GI framework geographical indication registry department for promotion of industry and internal trade under ministry of commerce will be taking care about this GI talk. GI talks comes under which ministry? Ministry of commerce and under department of promotion and industrial and internal trade DAPP. Which ministry? Commerce. GA tag. So, what we have, I am not mentioning GA tag. Oh, oh. So, in the current affairs class today, I got that 17 products got GA tax from 6 states. You remember only the 17 GA tax. You cannot, nearly 100 are there in India. Now, you cannot remember 100. Same like national parks, you cannot remember. You cannot remember tiger reserves, impossible. What are the things which are in the news in the last one year? So, 17 products of 6 states got GA tax. This 17 products I will give you PDF in the classroom. What are the 17 products? I will give you PDF in the classroom. Now, we are identifying oh, oh 17 products. Why? Because there is a PYQ, BRICS, BRICS is in the news, BRICS is in the news. Why? Because Argentina became part of BRICS. As soon as it became the part of BRICS, it left BRICS. 
hence it is in the news. Argentina's new president announced withdrawing his country from becoming a member of as soon as they became the member of BRICS, they left. It is in the news. Then everyone, then why you came? Everyone will ask. Or if you want to left, then why you should come? Everyone questioned Argentina. So, what are the countries newly added? You know BRICS countries. Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Now, new countries added to it. Those are called as BRICS plus. Those are called as BRICS plus. Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Russia, China, India, UAE, Ethiopia, South Africa, Brazil, Argentina joined, withdrawn also happened. So, total how many are there? 10 are there. Originally are what? Brazil, B, Russia, India, China, South Africa. So, what are newly added? Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Iran, UAE and Ethiopia and Ethiopia. Yes. That is Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Iran, UAE and Ethiopia. Engineering Service Examination Intelligence Unit, Civil Service Examination, ESE Engineering Service Examination, E is what? Egypt, S is called as Saudi Arabia, another E is called as Ethiopia, Intelligence Unit. So, someone is copying, so Intelligence Unit has been established, I is called as Iran, U is called as UAE. So, for Engineering Service Examination, there is an Intelligence Unit has been established under BRICS. Original BRICS, BRICS plus ESC intelligence unit. So, how many countries are there in BRICS? 10 countries. They might ask why because Argentina came, Argentina left. Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates have joined BRICS as new full members whereas, Argentina joined and left. It was done as per the decision adopted by the 15th BRICS summit in 2022. BRICS is an acronym to the group of five emerging economies, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. Was originally coined by a person called as Jim O. Nil. Economical term, BRICS is economical term. 41 percent of global population, 24 percent of global GDP and around 60 percentage of global trade will happening in this BRICS country. New development bank has been established under Shanghai. New development bank has been established under Shanghai. According to the declaration of Fortaleza, declaration. As per the Fortaleza declaration of Brazil, new development bank has been established under BRICS. They will be lending not only to the BRICS countries, they will be also lending to other countries. So, new development bank is part of BRICS. It got established under which declaration? Fortaleza declaration of Brazil. There is a contingent reserve agreement. The BRICS governments have signed a treaty on setting up of the contingent reserve arrangement. The arrangement is aimed at forestalling short term balance of payments pressures. Customs agreement. Customs agreements were signed to coordinate and ease trade transport with the BRICS countries. Launched remote sensing satellites also. So, we have a remote sensing satellite, we have contingent reserve arrangement means if any country is problem pay facing problems with respect to balance of payment, BRICS will save it like IMF like how international monetary fund will help the countries who are suffering with balance of payment. Similarly, the BRICS also will save the mainly these five countries, uh, but national development sorry new development bank will lend not only to the BRICS countries, but also to the all the countries. Clear online people? Why I am discussing this? Why I am discussing this? In which one of the following groups are all the four countries members of G20 are present? which year 2020. So, oh, oh, so countries names they asked. So, G20 or BRICS or G7 
or G8 or G4 compulsory I have to remember all this country. In the classroom what I will do, all these groups you will be getting the PDF, 1-1 one, one group PDF, 1-1 one, one group PDF, what are the countries are present. For example, group 4, group 4 are the 4 countries who are aspiring to become the member of United Nations Security Council permanent members. Those 4 countries are called as G4, who? Japan, India, tell me, Germany, four countries are aspiring to become part of permanent members. Italy, these are the four countries who want to become permanent members. India, Italy, Germany and Japan. What are United Nations Security Council permanent members? USA, UK, USSR means Russia, China, France. G4 countries who are aspiring to become part of permanent members. Germany, India, Japan and Italy. every group have its own significance. So, they asked on which, country, which group? G20. Hence, what is in the news? BRICS. Oh, BRICS I should study, why? Because he asked on G20. So, these are the G20 countries, what? Australia, alphabetically, Australia, Argentina, Turkey, Japan, Canada, Germany, Brazil, UK, South Africa, France, Italy, Saudi Arabia, India, Indonesia, China, Mexico, Russia, European Union, South Korea and US. These are the countries who are part of G20. Bilateral agreements in news. In the month of January, what are all the bilateral agreements which are in the news? Why I should read about bilateral agreements sir? why I should study bilateral agreements 2019. 2019. Recently, India signed a deal known as action plan for prioritization and implementation of cooperation areas in the nuclear field. Nuclear field is very strategic. So, with which country we had a nuclear agreement? Japan, Russia, United Kingdom, United States of America, common sense. Japan is against nuclear transfer. United Kingdom does not have nuclear minerals, they do not have uranium. USA is against nuclear power. Then with who are our close friends? Russia. On this basis, bilateral agreements. So, there is a question on bilateral agreements. So, what are all the bilateral agreements which happened in the month of January? India Australia Economic Cooperation and Trade Agreement, which is called as ECTA, Economic Cooperation Trade Agreement, is a bilateral free trade agreement signed between India and Australia on December 2, 2022. India Australia Economic Cooperation and Trade, India UAE Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, India has now signed all four foundational agreements with USA, Logistic Exchange Memorandum of Agreement, which is called as LIMO. Communication and Computability and Securement Agreement, which is called as COMCASA. Basic Exchange and Cooperation Agreement for Geospatial Cooperation BCEA with USA. General Security of Military Information Agreement was signed as long in ago with USA, a security agreement with these four countries. Why it is in the news? Now, we are rethinking on India Australia Economic Cooperation Trade Agreement. So, we have Economic Cooperation Trade Agreement with which country? Australia. We have four agreements with United States of America. What are the four agreements? Number one, LIMO, COMCASA, BICA and QGSOMIA. With the four, with these are very strategic. United States of America signed these four agreements only with India. They signed one or two, one or two, but altogether four has been signed only with Sreshta it is in the news. In January month only this government scheme came into existence. Shrestha. What is Shrestha? Shrestha is nothing but in 9th class and 11th class. In 9th class and 11th class admissions will be taken by the central government, whereby schooling will be provided, boarding will be provided, hostel will be provided free of cost. To whom? Mainly for SC students. 
So, SRESTA is a scheme which is exclusively for whom? Scheduled caste students, not for ST, scheduled caste students. So, obviously, this type of schemes will come under which ministry? Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment, remember this. Any SC, ST, OBC, minority, such sort of schemes are there, no? It will come under Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. CBSE has issued instructions for private residential schools interested in joining the schemes for residential education for meritorious SC students, SRESTA. Full form is what? Schools interested in joining the schemes, schemes for residential education for meritorious SC. Schools interested, schools sorry, schemes for residential education for meritorious so, earlier it was only government schemes, but now what they are doing, private schools also, if you are interested in SRESTA, you can join, we will reimburse. Who will reimburse? Central government. So, not only the government schools, now also? Admission will be providing class 9 and class 11 of CBSE or state affiliated private schools, government as well as private schools. Students from the SC community who come from a marginalized income group with annual income less than not all SCs, only those SCs whose financial income is less than 2.5. The scheme is being implemented two modes. Mode 1, Shrestha schools. Meritorious SC students are selected annually through a national entrance test conducted by national testing agency. The department covers the total fee for students including school and hostel fees up to 1 lakh. Bridge course, it is provided outside the regular school hours to enhance the students capability also. NGOs or voluntary organizations who want to run, they can run and the money will be given by? So, that is what? Scheme for residential education for meritorious planned in both government as well as private, but for the first time private schools also given reimbursement. For which students? SC. A, a, a national level competitive exam will be conducted, those who will clear they will come under this. The program name is called as SRESTA, mainly for scheduled caste, meritorious students, boys and girls. Which ministry? Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. National Goal Gasification Mission. National Goal Coal Gasification Scheme. National Coal Gasification Scheme. Why I should read about coal, sir? Coal is favorite question for UPSC, you know. Anything you come across coal, anything you come across coal, compulsory you read it. 2019, 2019, see here. Coal sector was nationalized by the government of India under Indira Gandhi. If you remember, yes. First of earlier, coal was private. Private people used to do mining. Private people used to do mining. Later, coal was nationalized by Indira Gandhi. He told that coal is a product of people of the country. So, who is the owner of the coal now? Government. Government means who? People. So, it was been nationalized by whom? Indira Gandhi. Correct. Coal blocks are allocated on lottery basis. See, coal is money on lottery basis or it will be auctioned, wrong. Till recently India imported coal to meet the shortages of domestic supply, but now India is self sufficient, self sufficient, no impossible. So, how many are correct? Only you have should know this, if you know general economics or post independence, you will come to know that the coal is been nationalized by Indira Gandhi only. Some good, good things were been made by Indira Gandhi like nationalization of coal, nationalization of banks were been done by? Indira Gandhi, 1969, yes or no? In 1969, banks, 14 banks were been nationalized, coal was been also nationalized. And later in 1985, another banks joined nationalization. So, that is the reason I have to read on National Coal Gasification Mission. What is this? National Coal Gasification Mission. See, coal is present inside, sometimes beneath the rocks. Taking will become very tough. Taking that coal will become a very tough. 
it, it results in accidents or it will be very complex. So, sometimes the Singerini collieries or, or coal mining people, coal India limited, they will leave because they cannot do mining. So, they came up with an idea which is called as gasification. What I will do? I will send some chemicals and some heat. So, what the coal will convert in the form of sink gas, which is nothing but carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide plus hydrogen. So, I will see when I send chemicals and when I send the heat, it will change in the form of sink gas. The sink gas I will collect through pipes and I will store it. So, it is nothing but a gas which I produced from coal. So, wherever coal cannot be mined, now I came up with an innovative idea called as gasification coal. The union cabinet approved 8500 crore in incentive scheme, the national coal gasification mission for coal gasification projects. <coughs> coal ministry under Atmanirbhar Bharat, the mission aims to utilize coal through coal gasification with the goal of achieving 100 million tons of coal classification by 2030. To reduce imports by 2030, adoption of indigenous technologies to reduce the country's reliance on imports of coal. So, what is the method? A thermochemical process, chemical heat will be given. A thermochemical process that converts coal into simple molecules, primarily carbon monoxide and hydrogen. This is called as sink gas, carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So, the coal will be converted in the form of sink gas called a synthesis gas or sink gas. Here coal is partially oxidized by air, oxygen, steam or carbon dioxide under controlled conditions to produce a liquid fuel known as sink gas. Either it will be coming in the form of liquid or either it will be coming in the form of gas. That particular gas is called as sink gas, where I cannot do mining on coal, I will be changing the form to liquid form or gaseous form. That particular form is called as sink gas. So, for that I had a mission now. So, 2024 January government of India came up a mission that the government of India is going to allocate 8500. So, that how much I can produce? 100 million tons of coal classification by 2030. So, that I will not depend upon the coal or I will not depend upon oil. I will be depending upon this sink. Hence, it is in the news. Hence, it is in the news. Next question, Supreme Court. <coughs> Why Supreme Court, sir? Why Supreme Court? Supreme Court, 75 years of celebrations called as what? Diamond Jubilee celebrations happened on Supreme Court, January 28th, 2024. 75 years of Supreme Court, which has been inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So, Supreme Court compulsory expected question for 2024. Whatever is happening in Supreme Court is important because 75 years of Supreme Court. Recently, Prime Minister inaugurated the Diamond Jubilee celebrations of Supreme Court. Supreme Court is apex judicial body under the Constitution of India. Article 124 to 127 of Part 5 talks about Supreme Court of India. It was inaugurated on January 28, 1950 and succeeded the Federal Court of India. Federal Court of India changed to Supreme Court of India in the day January 28, 1950. Now, it is January 28, 2024 Hence, 75 years has been successfully completed. Significant role, the main it has been provided with important powers and like writ jurisdiction, original jurisdiction in case of center state or state state disputes, advisory, special leave, judicial review. It helps the protecting the fundamental rights. These all things were been done by Supreme Court. Powers, it is a final arbiter. Who is the final person? Supreme Court. Original jurisdiction what? Disputes between the government of India or states or between the states and issues related to fundamental rights or constitution. This is original jurisdiction. Writ jurisdiction, article 32. Who will be enforcement of fundamental rights will be done by whom? Supreme Court and High Court, but however, Supreme Court also under article 32. International commercial arbitration. If any Indian company is involved, then Supreme Court have the power as a international commercial arbitrator. Special leave petition, I told you. Under article 136, the Supreme Court, it is discretion grant special leave to appeal from any judgment. Under this discussion, any judgment can be made as a special leave petition. 
according to its discretion means special case they can take and they can again hear the cases that particular petition is called as special leave petition curative petition after dismissing a review petition the supreme court can reconsider the final judgment that is called as curative petition advisory which is article 143 contempt powers contempt powers are vested in supreme court of india as well as high court also but however supreme court is also having contempt powers so these are the powers of supreme court why supreme court is important when 75 years of supreme court before supreme court it is called as what federal court which day? January 28th, 1950. What is different special limitation? Discretion on special cases. The, reach, the judgment will be again repetitioned. Whereas, curative petition, already judgment has been out, but I feel that some mal judgment has been came. So, again I can take the petition. It is called as curative petition. Special case, I myself will take the case. It is called as curative petition. 12 fourths of Marathas for UNESCO's World Heritage listing. Now, government of India is submitting 12 Marathas forts for UNESCO's listing. What are all the 12 forts, sir? You will try to remember. Salhar Fort, Salhar Fort, Shivaneri Fort, Shiv Marathas forts is all there. Shivaneri Fort, Lohagad Fort. Lohagad Fort, Khanderi Fort, Island, Khanderi Fort. So, what are the 12 forts? We will remember. India nominated 12 Maratha landscape forts for UNESCO World Heritage List for the year 2024-2025. What are those? We can expect like this. How many of the Marathas forts were being recommended for UNESCO's World Heritage List? 12 forts. What are those? Salhar Fort, Salhar Fort, like this, Salhar Fort, Shivaneri Fort, Shivaneri Fort, Lohagad Fort, Lohagad Fort, Khanderi Fort, Island, Khanderi Fort, Raigad, Rai Raj, Raigad Fort. Rajgad Fort, Pratapgad Fort, Suvarnadurga Fort, Panhala Fort, Vijay Durga Fort, Sindhu Durg in Maharashtra, Sindhu Durg Fort, and Jinji Fort in Tamil Nadu. Only 12th Fort is from Tamil Nadu. Rest 11 are from? So, 12 forts were being Jinji Fort. So, first one is what? Salher Fort. Second one is what? Shivaneri Fort. Third one is called as Lohagad Fort. Fourth one is what? Kanderi Fort. Fifth one is what? Raigad, Rajgad, Pratapgad, Suvarnadurga, Panhala Fort, Vijay Durga, Sindhu Durga, and finally Jinji. There will be Gindi railway station will be there. Jinji Fort in Tamil Nadu. Out of this 12 forts, 8 are protected by already out of this 8 are protected by archaeological survey of India. Now, if it is being protected by a world heritage site, then UNESCO will be protecting, the more funds will come. So, protection will be more serious. So, how many forts were being recommended, not finalized, recommended to UNESCO's world heritage site? They have been developed between 17th and 19th century, extraordinary strategic military powers, Maratha military ideology, especially guerrilla warfare during the reign of Chhatrapati Shivaji are distributed across diverse geographical known as Konkan Coast, etc. UNESCO, UNESCO every year will be declaring some as world heritage sites. Embo international treaty called the convention concerning the protection of the world cultural and natural heritage adopted at present in India. There are 42 world heritage sites out of which 34 are cultural sites, 7 are natural sites, 1 is. So, up to now how many? 42. 34 are cultural like Taj Mahal. 34 are cultural, 7 are natural like what manas manas tiger reserve seven one is mixed both so now how many are recommended twelve are recommended x ray polarimeter satellite x ray polarimeter satellite one satellite was been launched 
why I should study AstroSat they asked. So, compulsory I have to study about Mangalyan also asked see 2016 the Mangalyan they asked. They asked on Mangalyan. So, I have to study about what is this X-ray polarimeter satellite Mangalyan they asked. What was the question? It is also called Mars orbital automation yes or no? Made India the second country to have a spacecraft orbit the Mars after USA. Made India the only country to be successful in making its spacecraft orbit the Mars in the very first attempt. See these are not tough. See 2016 we are not bothered about it. Question is easy, just awareness they are asking whether this Mangalyan is called as Mars orbiter, mom we call no Mars orbiter mission or not, it is India after USA, direct awareness questions these are. So, hence they asked about Mangalyan in 2016, in 2023 what is making, 2024 January what is making the news? X-ray polarimeter. Hence, we can expect a question on X-ray polarimeter, what is this? Nothing. In outer space, the X-rays are being studied by this particular satellite called as X-ray polarimeter satellite. Polarimeter satellite. Recently, ISRO has launched its first X-ray polarimeter satellite to study the polarization of X-rays emanating from bright celestial sources in the medium frequency band. It is a low earth orbit 650 kilometers from the earth surface propelled through PSLV C-58 rocket. They have been built by Raman Research Institute and UR Rao Satellite Center both located in Bengaluru. will study various dynamics of bright astronomical X-rays source in extreme conditions. X-ray polarization is cosmic sources like black holes, neuron stars and magnetars. Put India in an elite category, it has been built on India's first and only the world's second polarimeter mission, the other such mission is NASA's. So, studying of X-ray polarimeter is the second, first is NASA. What I am going to study? I am going to study about the X-rays which are coming from celestial objects. Through which satellite? X-ray polarimeter. So, earlier who did it? NASA. Now, it is India and India's first mission called is called as X-ray polarimeter, X-ray polarimeter satellite nothing, it will study the X-rays, the strength of X-rays coming from celestial objects. So, that I can capture it, I can study it. So, if it will be useful, then I can use it for science and technology. X-rays are electromagnetic radiations whose wavelength is 0 0.01 to 10 nanometers. X-rays comprise electric and magnetic waves that are constant in motion, being sinusoidal waves that do not follow a pattern direction of motion, whereas a polarized X-ray is both organized as two waves vibrating in the same direction. This is what the X-ray. So, it is the second, the first in India mainly studying the X-rays which are coming out from celestial object. That particular satellite is called as X-ray polarimeter satellite. India France defense ties, India France defense ties. We will discuss about ISRO first, ISRO just for an idea. <coughs> ISRO comes under department of space and the department of space is headed by prime minister. It had Indian space association ISA, there are bodies, one body is called as ISA, Indian space association, what it is, three bodies are there, four bodies are there, ISA, Anthrix, NSIL, IN space, understand this, four bodies are there, four organs are there under ISRO. First one is Indian Space Association. We will also work towards building global linkage for the Indian space industry to bring in critical technologies and investment. Indian Space Association is a body. Indian Space Association is a body. They will move to different, different countries. They are experts. They study. They make deals. They finalize deals. And the deals will be made with foreign countries with respect to science and technology and space by whom? Indian Space Age Association. Who will be appointing? Prime Minister will be appointing. So, the body which makes the agreements, the body which makes the ties with respect to space is which body? Indian Space Association. Anthrix. Commercial deals. For example, I manufactured one satellite. I want to keep on my house. So, I want to study across my house. 
commercial, then I will make a call to Anthrax. You are launching say a rocket now, please keep my satellite also. How much money you want? So, the deals will be made by whom? Commercial deals will be made by whom? Anthrax. Commercial deals will be made by Anthrax. NSIL. It is a commercial arm of ISRO with the primary responsibility of enabling Indian industries. Anthrax with foreign, with local, but exclusively with Indian industries to tackle high technology space related activities is NSIL, National Space India Limited. Both are same, but Anthrax is limited, NSIL is more broad. It is also commercial wing. IN space, regulatory activities of the private sector. With which company I have to make the agreement? Once NSIL make the deal, then IN space will come and will check whether that company is authentic or not. It is called as IN space. And who will be executing it? ISRO. Executive body is ISRO. So, we have four arms. One is called as ISA, second is called as Anthrix, third is called as INSIL, fourth is called as IN space. Executive wing is India defense. Why France? Why I should study with France? Republic Day guest he is. Republic Day guest he is. So, compulsory we have to discuss about the ties. Macroni, Emmanuel Macron visited India, who has been invited chief guest for 75th Republic Day celebrations of India, mass 75 years of establishment of India France dip diplomatic relations, 25 years of strategic partnership. During the visit, India and France made significant decisions regarding enhancing defense collaboration. India France defense industrial partnership for designing, developing, and producing the military equipment together. Tata and Airbus deal to produce H125 helicopters. H 125 helicopters will be manufactured by both companies. Airbus belongs to France. Boeing belongs to USA. Boeing 747, we tell no. Boeing belongs to USA. Airbus belongs to France. Boeing, Airbus and Tata came together for manufacturing H 125 helicopters. New agreement signed for a defense space partnership. Signed with New Space India Limited and France, Ariana Space. Commercial. Year 22 will be seen as India France year of innovation and operationalization of UPA at Eiffel Tower. Other areas of cooperation, civil nuclear cooperation, Jaitapur nuclear power project. We have Jaitapur nuclear power project which is coming up in Maharashtra. It is coming mainly with the cooperation of France. Which company? Ariana company of France is responsible for construction of nuclear reactors in Jaitapur. So, we have a nuclear cooperation agreement with France also. In which nuclear reactor? Jaitapur, civil nuclear, very good. Civil nuclear means electricity. Military nuclear means bomb, nuclear bomb. So, we have agreement in where? Civil nuclear. Civil nuclear means what? Civil people. Civilians what? Electricity want. So, through nuclear, when we want to manufacture electricity, it is called as civil nuclear agreement. So, Jaitapur nuclear power project is a construction between whose countries? India France roadmap on cyber security and digital technologies. India France roadmap on blue economy and ocean governance. Bilateral trade reached up to how much? 13.4 billion. Why it is important? Why? Because he came to India. Yes, sir. Hepatitis A vaccine. What is this hepatitis A vaccine? Why it is in the news? Why it is in the news? Vaccine against hepatitis A. The best way to prevent hepatitis is through vaccination with hepatitis A vaccine is one of the foot borne illness that can be prevented through vaccination. Why it is in the news? Indigenously developed vaccine was been made for the first time against hepatitis A. Indigenously developed indigenously developed vaccination against hepatitis A. Hepatitis A is the only disease which is food born. Mainly the disease will enter into us by food. It is hepatitis A. Varieties are there A, B, C, D, E, varieties are there, but A is mainly with Indian Immunological Limited under National Dairy Development Board has made a significant milestone in public health with launch of Heavy Shore. 
that vaccine name is called as like Covishield, it is called as Hevishore. India's first indigenously developed hepatitis A vaccine, Hevishore. It is a two dose vaccine, the first dose given to about 12 months and the next dose is given after 6 months, 18 months, overall 18 months. For routine immunization in children and individuals at rest due to exposure or travel the regions with where high hepatitis A is prevalent. Individuals with occupational infections, those suffering from chronic liver disease can also receive hepatitis A vaccination. It is a viral infection that primary cause inflammation of the liver and can be acute short term or chronic long term. It is a highly contagious liver infection transmitted mainly through food, but sometimes through water also. Mainly through food, not by water, not that much, but mainly through food. Water born is what typhoid, water born is typhoid, food born is hepatitis A. Fever, fatigue, nausea, there is no specific treatment for hepatitis A. Recovery from symptoms following infection can be slow, expected to play a significant role in preventing hepatitis. There are 5 hepatitis virus A, B, C, D and E. Vaccine is available for all except. So, which variety does not have? Vaccine. C does not have vaccine. Newly developed water what? A. And their vaccine name is called as Havishore. Habishur. For which disease? Hepatitis. Viral or bacterial? Viral. Viral. Mainly liver part will be affected. Vaccine is there. Indigenously developed by whom? Indian Immunological Limited under National Dairy Development Board. Election Commission is in the news. Why? Election Commission is in the news. Why? Because in the month of January, the Supreme Court gave a judgment. Two election commissioners and chief election commissioner listen carefully. Two election commissioners and one chief election commissioner will be appointed by a body consisting of pa prime minister, cabinet minister and CGA. This judgment was been given by Supreme Court. Immediately election commission amendment act was been made in the year 2023 and was been applied from 2024 which told that in December the judgment came and told that no, yes election commissioners will be appointed, but by three people consisting of prime minister, cabinet minister, but not by CGI, but by leader of opposition in Lok Sabha. So, a petition was being filed in Supreme Court in January 2024. You Supreme Court, you gave the judgment that CGI will be part of selection committee, but the government made a legislation, the parliament made a legislation, removed you in place of you, who is substituted? If CJ appoint, he might be so much radical, he might not listen. So, leader of opposition also gave hands with ruling government. We will only decide whatever we will fight, but we will only decide we will not enter judiciary. But once judiciary enter, they will be more rigid. So, there will be problem not only to the ruling party, but also to the opposition party. So, they told that no need for CGI, we will only look into the matter and they made whom? Leader of opposition. The constitution bench of Supreme Court in the Anu Barnawal versus Union of India case recommended for committee comprising Prime Minister, Leader of Opposition in Parliament and the Chief Justice of, but the act which had been new law which made, it made Prime Minister, Cabinet Minister and Leader of Opposition. So, here it was what? Prime Minister, Leader of Opposition and CJ. Now, we told Leader of Opposition will be there, Prime Minister will be there, but in place of CJ who will be there? cabinet minister will be there. Then the Supreme Court a petition was been filed, you told the CGA, but they removed the CGA. Then Supreme Court told that they are parliamentary body, they can make law, they made law, finish, you go home. So, now it is CGA is not there in the select committee, who is there in place of CGA? Prime Minister, Leader of Opposition as well as cabinet minister. But in the judgment who are there? Prime Minister, Leader of Opposition plus CGA, Leader of Opposition, Leader of Opposition other issues. Constitution has not provided for qualification of chief election commissioner or information commissioners. They will be appointed up to now. They will be appointed randomly according to the choice of government, but now by a three member committee, prime minister, leader of opposition, cabinet minister. 
well CEC and EC have the same power but safeguards for removal are provided for election commission and as that of chief election commissioner. There is a lack of independent state for ECA and is depend on government for finances as well as for manpower. They do not have, they work under government only. There is no statutory backing for model code of conduct, yes or no? Model code of conduct, it is just a executive resolution given by election commission of India, whether it is a law or executive resolution. So, it does not have any legal backing. These are the issues which are pending with election commission of Vibov scheme, it is in the news, Vibov scheme, why? Why it is in the news? In 2017, they asked about Vidyanjali. In 2017, it was a current affair, Vidyanjali scheme. So, in 2024, Vibov scheme. What is Vibov scheme? Nothing. Indian citizens who located in for Indian research scholars, Indian scientists who are working in foreign countries as scientists like European Space Agency or NASA or any other organizations of foreign countries, Indian citizens are working there for them to attract. The government of India came up with a scheme called as Vibhav. So, government is promising that we will be giving 4 lakhs per month, please you come and work in India. So, that our scientific research and development will improve, that scheme is called as Vaibhav scheme, full form. Vaishishk Bharatiya Vajnanik, Vaishishk specialized Indian scientists. You are specialist Indian scientist, please do not work in other countries, work in India, I will give you the amount. Under which scheme? Vaibhav. Fellowship to how many? 22 scientists of Indian origin, it was by Ministry of Science and Technology. Why I asked? Vidyanjali 2017. Now, what is there? Vaibhav. Venkat Raman who got Nobel Prize, Indian citizen only but working in America. So, why Indian citizen scientists are working in other country to attract them? Government of India came up with a scheme, why? Because they will come when we pay high. So, now government is ready to pay 4 lakhs per month. So, please come and work in India. The same thing. Corbivax vaccine, Corbivax vaccine. Another milestone in India's fight against COVID-19. The vaccine name is called as Corbivax vaccine. Central Drug Standard Control Organization grants emergency use authorization to Corbivax vaccine whose children is between 12 to 18 years. India's first indigenously developed receptor binding domain protein subunit vaccine. So, I will take the disease virus, I will take the diseased virus, a dead virus, then my immune system will activate. Now, this activated immune system I separated by the name called as protein. Now, that protein is been taken directly, so that directly I will go and attack if any COVID-19 comes into me. That particular vaccine is called as Corbivax. Did you got? First indigenously developed COVID-19 vaccine, granted emergency use listing by World Health Organization. It is a receptor binding domain protein subunit vaccine. Spike protein of SARS-CoV-2, it allows to enter the cells and cause disease, so that the immune system recognizes the protein and develops antibodies to fight the infection. Other types of vaccine include inactivated, live attenuated, mRNA and viral vector vaccine. So, a dead or inactivated virus will be given into me, my antibodies will identify it and starts destroying it. That indigenously developed COVID vaccine against COVID vaccine is Corby Vax. Great Indian Bustard, Great Indian Bustard, why sir every time it is in the news? Great Indian every time they ask it, why it is in the news? Because mainly these great Indian bastards are flying or staying on the electric lines. Unknowingly, they are coming onto the electric lines and they are high tension wires. So, they are dying. So, the government of India is planning 
wherever this great Indian bus stars are flying, we will shift electric with solar panels. So that if they sit on solar panels also, electricity will not come into them. That is the idea of to protect great Indian bus stars. Supreme Court has recently asked government to come out with a plan to save great Indian bastards from extinction largely due to collision with high transmission power lines. It is also said that the government's plan need to balance between preservation of the bad bird sanctuaries and India's global commitment to embrace clean energy like solar power. So, what is the status? Critically endangered and most of the great Indian bastards are dying because of sitting on electric lines. So, better to transform it with solar panels. So, that your solar panel electricity will increase, your solar ambitions will be increased as well as the critically endangered great Indian bustard also will be saved. Who gave the judgment? Supreme Court gave and government is also told okay for it. Arid and semi-arid regions, important sites like Desert National Park, Rajasthan they are present, Nalia, Gujarat they are present, Varora, Maharashtra they are present, Bellary, Bellary, Karnataka they are present. Its highest population is found in Rajasthan. They are threatened due to power transmission lines. They are threatened due to power transmission lines. It is covered under species for recovery program under integrated development of wildlife habitats under Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. It is covered under species for Red Sea crisis. Red Sea crisis, why it is in the news? 2019 PYQ. Consider the following pairs. Sea bordering countries, Adriatic Sea, Albania, Black Sea, Croatia, Caspian Sea, Kazakhstan, Mediterranean Sea, Morocco, Red Sea, Syria. Which of the pairs given above are correctly matched? 2000 Red Sea. See the map. We have Red Sea. Red Sea go into the Mediterranean Sea through Suez Canal. And we have a very narrow strait which is called as Babale Mandap. On Yemen. So, what is the problem now? The ships which are moving from, the ships which are coming from Europe into the Red Sea into the Asia or ships which are coming from the Asia into the Red Sea into the Mediterranean Sea. Here in Yemen, Houthi rebels, Houthi rebels are entering into the commercial ships. Houthi rebels, who are these Houthis? Houthis rebels are Yemeni people, they are Shia people. In Shia, two, in Yemen, two population are there, Shia and Sunni. They believe that Shia population is more, but ruled by Saleh regime. Saleh is a Sunni people. So, there is a conflict between the Saleh and Shia people. That Shia group is called as Houthis. They are rebels against the government and they removed also the ruler. Now, civil war is happening in Yemen. So, this rebels, now what they are doing for the sake of money, they are entering into the ships, mainly those ships who belongs to Israel to showcase that you people are killing our Muslims in Israel. So, we are disturbing your ships which are flowing through our region. Hence, Red Sea crisis. Got it? See, how this this is like ship only now. Houthis rebels entering into the ships, mainly owned by USA and Israel, targeted. They are entering them and they are taking away all the goods and selling outside. Houthis rebels, Red Sea crisis. Recent attacks on ships in the Red Sea have raised worries about global trade disruption. It is believed to be carried out by Houthis rebels based in Yemen in protest against Israel's actions in Gaza. Disruption Red Sea route increase Indian agriculture production. So, India will be impacted. Why? Because movement will not happen. When movement will not happen, the prices will increase. So, there is there will be impact on India also. Red Sea is a narrow strip of water extended southeastwards from Suez, Egypt to the Babale Mandap. Babale Mandap state connects the Mediterranean Sea to the Arabian Sea via the Red Sea. Bordering countries, the countries bordering the Red Sea are given by who? Desi, remember this. De Desi, the bordering countries of Red Sea, Desi. D is what? Dijiboti. E is what? Eritrea. 
E is what? Eritrea. S is what? Saudi Arabia. Another S is what? Sudan. Another E is what? Egypt. Another Y is called? Yemen. Desi. These are the bordering countries of? Red Sea. Desi. Dejiboti, Eritrea, South Sudan, Sudan, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Yemen. Why it is in the news? Because of this. Hence, it is in the news. So, what are the bordering countries of Red Sea? They see. It is bordered by Sinai Peninsula, the Gulf of Aqaba and the Gulf of Suez which leads to the Suez Canal in North and Gulf of Aden in the South. Houthis, they are Shia Muslim people, they are also called as Zaydis. They want to capture the power in Yemen. They are the supporters of Iranian people. Iran is also Shia people. Hejabullah group of Lebanon. Hejabullah group of Lebanon, Shia group of Iran and the Houthis of Yemen. These three are powerful Shia terrorist organizations. Not Sunnis, Shias. Shias are completely against USA and Israel. India, Maldives. It is in the news. Why it is in the news, India, Maldives? Ongoing Lakshadip issue. We are developing Lakshadip. Why we are developing Lakshadip? Why? Because India would campaign in Maldives. Growing India Maldives China relations, BRI and string of pearls, whereby China's influence on Maldives is increasing. So, hence there is disturbances happening between India and Maldives. But we are the very good friends of Maldives in 1988 when the military coup happened, India had an operation called as Operation Cactus and went and saved the democratically elected people in 1988. But now the Maldives government forgotten about the history and they are saying India out campaign. Hence, the relationship between India and Maldives is important. Hence, the geography of Maldives and India you have to go through it. Antimicrobial resistance. What is antimicrobial resistance? It can be antifungal, antimicrobial, antiparasitic, antifungal, antiviral. These all are called as antimicrobial resistance. When I use multiple times by antibiotic tablets, what will happen? My virus which is there in me, bacteria which is there in me, fungi which is there in me, it will become resistant to the antibiotics. So, when it become resistant to the antibiotic, that particular bacteria will become super powerful. That super powerful bacteria which became antimicrobial resistance is called a super bug. That is the reason if I take antibiotic tablet also my fever is, so it is called as super bug. Simple language that is called as superbug. Recently, survey conducted by the National Center for Disease Control raised concerns about the over prescription or off of survived patients were prescribed antibiotics for preventing infections rather than to before he get a fever, he is going and taking antibiotic. So, it is becoming very severe. Hence, the bacteria is becoming super powerful than the antibiotic. Those bacteria or those virus or those fungi are called as superbugs. Antimicrobial drugs, over prescription. Hence, India's effort to control antimicrobial resistance include national action plan on antimicrobial resistance focusing on one health approach, antibiotic stewardship program of ICMR. Snow leopard count, snow leopard count. No liquid count. It is vulnerable. Found across 12 countries Afghanistan, Bhutan, China, India, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Mongolia, Nepal, Pakistan, Russia, Tajikistan, and Uzbekistan. Only in these 12 countries, only snow leopard is present. Why it is in the news? In the first ever scientific exercise of snow leopard population assessment in India reported 718 snow leopards in India. It was led by Wildlife Institute of India, collaboration from concerned states, mainly National Conservation Foundation and World Wide Fund for Nature. The maximum number of cats, snow leopard leopards are present in Ladakh, followed by Uttarakhand, chronological order. More is there in Ladakh, 
second Uttarakhand, third Himachal Pradesh, fourth Arunachal Pradesh, fifth Sikkim, last is Jammu and Kashmir. It is present only in 12 countries. Afghanistan, we will remember like this, we will remember world map. Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan and Ujmakistan. Then India, then Pakistan, then Bhutan, then China, then that side, then Nepal, then Mongolia, then top Russia, top of Jammu and Kashmir, not down, not Bangladesh, top of Jammu and Kashmir. Now we will see. Afghanistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Ujmakistan, India, Pakistan, Nepal, Bhutan, Mongolia, China, Russia, 12 countries came or not. We have to visualize it. Starting from Afghanistan to Russia, top. More snow leopards are present in Ladakh. Second, Uttarakhand. Third, Himachal Pradesh. Fourth, Arunachal Pradesh. Fifth, and finally, it is Jammu and Kashmir. It is present in Wildlife Protection Act 1972, Schedule 1. It is vulnerable and mainly it is losing for bone and for human animal conflict, habitat loss, conservation. India is part of global snowpod leopard and ecosystem protection program since 2013. Collaboration global efforts for snowpod leopard. Project snowpod leopard came in 2009. It promotes an inclusive and participatory approach to conservation of snow leopards and their habitats. role of governor, it is in the news, means what in polity also we can expect the question with respect to role of governor. Mainly he is misusing discretionary powers, he is sending the bills to the president, merely Kerala governor, all the bills which are passed by the legislative assembly are sending to the president. So, the role of governor is becoming controversial. So, here comes the recommendations of Sarkaria Commission and Punch Commission. Sargaria Commission and Punch Commission recommended that governor should be appointed after consultation with chief minister. Hence, if he is appointed with consultation with chief minister, he will not act as agent of central government, rather than he will act as a license between the centre and the state. Who recommended this? Sarkaria Commission and Punch Commission. Sarkaria Commission is called as first centre state relations, Punch Commission is called as second centre state relations commission. The governor should be present person of eminence in some field of public life and not belongs to the state where he is appointed. So, if I want to become the governor of Andhra Pradesh, then I should not belong to Andhra Pradesh, but I should be a person from some eminence. Commission suggests the governor should be removed only by resolution of the state legislature, which would ensure more stability and autonomy. If the governor should be removed, the governor should be removed by state legislature, not by the president act as a bridge between center and the state, not as agent of center. The governor should exercise the discretionary powers sparingly and judicially, not use them to undermine the democratic process. Every time sending it to the president is not at all required. He should act as a license between the center and the state, but should not act as an agent of. So, in that way, what is in the news also we have to discuss mainly from the perspective of governor. Polity, correct affair. Karpuri Thakur, why is in the news? Bharat Ratna, posthumously he got Bharat Ratna. Yesterday who got? LK Advani got Bharat Ratna. Posthumously is very important. He is a person who is responsible for OBC reservations. For Mandal Commission, he is a person who pressurized the Mandal Commission to give reservations to OBC and he gave a formula also how the reservation should be given. The formula is provide a 26 percent reservation of which OBC will get 12 percent share, economically backward classes among the OBCs will get 8 percent, women will get 3 percent, poor from the upper caste will get 3 percent. So, ho total how much? So, he told total OBCs will get 12 percent, in OBCs who are economically weaker will get 8 percent women will get 3 percent, economically weaker section upper caste will get 3 percent. So, total how much it is becoming? 26. He is the person who gave this formula to Mandal Commission. The first person who recommended reservations to the Mandal Commission is Karapuri Thakur, Karpuri Thakur, 12 percent, 
OBCs, all OBCs, irrespective of their economical status. 8 percent within the OBCs who are economically backward, 3 percent for women, 3 percent for economically weaker sections in general category. So, 26 percent reservation should be provided. Who recommended to the Mandal Commission? That formula is called as Karpuri Thakur formula. He got this. This is about all the current affairs of January. In this way, we have to identify the previous year's questions of current affairs and we have to do the current affairs. In this format for prelims 2024, which will be helpful for APPAC as well as TSPAC as well, the current affairs. PYQ based, but PYQs will be from UPSC only. PYQ based current affairs we will be doing from 26th of February. Starts July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, 10 months of current affairs properly we will do. And that current affairs will be 10 sessions, means 20 hours. Then we will have government schemes, all government schemes, all legislations, all missions, all policies and all international events, all declarations, all international organizations which conducted in last one year. In that way, in 40 hours of 20 sessions, you will be completing complete current affairs. I will be taking all the classes. Okay? Any doubts? Thank you.